hello and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Katherine Haleko and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Say hi, Terry. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Terry and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. Yes. So this week we're going to discuss the Swiss Diplomacy episode of West Wing from season four and also the movie Moana, Mm -hmm. which I had not seen, which was a big hole in my my pop culture life. I had and was very happy to watch it again. Yeah. Um, But before we get to that, we finished up with season one of The Good Plays. We did. So we got to the spoiler that we had already (laughs) found out about. If you don't know about it and you don't want to know, now would be a good time to fast forward. Close your (laughs) put your hands over your ears and go, la la la, I can't hear you for about the next ten minutes and then we'll be back. (laughs) It'll be safe. Yeah. yeah, so we watched the last two. Um, season one was only 13 episodes, mm-hmm. so this was number 12 called Mindy St. Clair, mm-hmm. and number 13, Michael's Gambit. Yeah. So in number 12 um, was when Eleanor and Jian Yu, or Jason, Jason, I guess he would prefer <laughs> to be called now. I think he has to be now. Jason now, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's also um, easier to say. Yes, um, <laughs> J- and, and Jason's bride, Janet. <laughs> Um, traveled to the home of this Mindy St. Clair who is, lives in what, um, Eleanor likes to call a medium place. She's not in the good place or the bad place. Um, she's this nice little cottage in the middle of a desert. (laughs) And she, she's there. You learn that she's there because basically she was a horrible person, but then, moments before she died she was about to kind of really change her life and start a foundation with all of her wall street dollars that she had earned um but then she got killed by a subway or stepped on the third rail (laughs) um died and then her sister started the foundation with her money Uh so nobody knew what to do with her i guess (laughs) So she's in this house with lukewarm beer and Eagles Live records and VCR tapes of Cannonball Run. This is the medium right. place. This is what the medium place is like. <laughs> and she's still wearing her like power suit yes. from the 80s. And she's dressed at all. <laughs> You're right, right. So yeah, so that's what happened in, in that one. And then partway through it... Right? I think so. As I say, they're all a blob to me. Thank you, Netflix. <laughs> Sean, who is the the judge from the afterlife, <laughs> yes. um, summons Bad Janet, who is hilarious, <laughs> and um, ter- makes a like walkie talkie system out uh-huh. of the two the two Janets, <laughs> um, and tells Eleanor and Jason that if they don't come back from the medium place or from Mindy's yes. house. What is it? Chidi and Tahani are mm-hmm. going to have to go in their place. Right. Which is just fine with Jason. Right. Jason's like, cool. <laughs> I'm I'm fine with that. She's going to stay here with my bride. Right. And try to figure out how to do sex stuff. <laughs> but Eleanor convinces him or forces him <laughs> to, um, to go back. But then they miss their deadline and by just a minute or something. Yeah. And so then Sean says... Whatever, you know, two people have to go to the bad place. You guys figure out who Uh they are. So that sparks a whole (laughs) debate, right? (laughs) Between everyone saying, I'll go. No, you shouldn't go. I'll go. Uh Or, no, I don't want to (laughs) go. Good Eleanor pops in to say she's going to go. And there's a whole love triangle involving Chidi that makes his stomach hurt. And things just get more and more complicated until... Eleanor has a little revelation. Right. (laughs) And I can't imagine, like, if you were watching these a week apart. Yeah. And you saw episode 12, and I believe it's at the end of that, right? Yeah. That she she figures out. No, it's at the end of, it's it's on, it's in. It's in the last episode, isn't it? I really Maybe have no a, idea. It must be at the very beginning. Well, anyway, yes. it's, it's, she figures out that the whole thing has been a gambit by Michael, <laughs> which is the title of the final episode, <laughs> Yes, um, to, to actually um, simulate the good place and bring these four people there to torture each other <laughs> instead of having the demons of the bad place yes. do it for them. 
Yes. I think so. I think that last episode we got Michael's flashbacks. And it seems that his flashbacks are designing this good neighborhood until about three quarters of the way in, you realize that he was really designing a bad neighborhood. So I think that whole thing is in that last episode, mm -hmm. though I'm not sure. But this is the I only right. time in all of our watching this that I really wish I was watching it unspoiled because I would like to know what it would have been like to see that yes. and suddenly realize that everything you've been watching for the entire season is turned right. on its ear. And yes, that would have been amazing. Yes. I knew it was coming and I enjoyed it and I enjoyed Eleanor's cleverness in figuring it out and then turning the tables and, you know, just, um, hey, Mikey, <laughs> you know, like, go ahead, right. call the train, go ahead. And this like fire demon comes into his meeting <laughs> yeah. and he's like, no, we have the conference room booked <laughs> until 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Yes. So I, that was really fun. But that was one part that it would have been fun to see completely unspoiled. And what right. people must have thought when they saw that. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> right. There was, a, there was a video uh, on YouTube of Kristen Bell taping when all her coworkers found out what it was. Oh, that I guess wow. she and Ted Danson knew, but nobody else knew where it was going uh -huh. from the beginning. So oh, wow. That's um, cool. they, they showed <laughs> them finding out that they had been in the bad place all this time. So that is a real fun twist. And I know from the same thing that had me spoiled about this season, that the next season takes the ball and runs with it. That if yeah. you had any concerns, how are they possibly going to see this through and where can they possibly go from here? They go some real fun places. So I am looking right. forward to that. Yeah, and you you do find out at the end of this one that um, Michael's going to erase their memories and yes. start over. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where they leave it at the end right. of this season. But Eleanor so. leaves herself a note in Janet's mouth. In Janet's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> and, uh, and that's so where it is. Even though they but, set her up with a hot mailman as her soulmate. Right. They, they figure that will distract her for a while, but then she gets her note. So it'll That's be right. interesting to hear, see where it goes on from here. But what a fun season. I've so enjoyed watching this, and I'm really glad we made it something we were watching for the show because that made sure I actually did <laughs> watch it. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed yes. it too. And and like you said, you know, yes, it would have been fun to yeah. see this twist unspoiled, but still, it, it was it's fun. been so much fun to watch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yes. Regardless. So. Yeah. I have enjoyed it. Very nicely done. Yeah. And now we get to just jump right on into season we two. We do not have to wait a whole summer. We don't have to wait. So for next week, we are going to kick off um, season two. Yes. Let's see where they go from here. We will watch three yeah. episodes. So we're back to three episodes again then, right? Well, we have to do four because... Okay. Um, because we just did two this past ah, week. Okay, so we got to catch up. And we think that the first two are kind of connected. A two-parter. That's right. Right. All righty then. Because so, we are, we are trying to get caught up by the time it comes back from football. Right. Exactly. So we're on a schedule, y'all. Right. <laughs> and you should be too. <laughs> yes. And then we will only be able to watch one a week. Uh, <laughs> so and now we have to switch from watching this on netflix to watching this on on demand or nbc.com or a recent episode purveyor of your choice right okay yes i know on my cable system it is available um on demand yes so, so i will be checking that out i maybe have to watch it on a big screen instead of my computer Ooh. that's a step up so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've been watching it on my ancient ipad that i use on the treadmill yeah so it's gonna be i'm gonna have to switch to the tel to the regular tv too yes but that's yes. okay very excited so. to see where it goes from here and just really enjoying the performances and you know how great is mike shore at finding supporting players because you think of all the people mm -hmm. at, on on parks and rec and what they've done since then and the the people who play tahani and chidi and janet and Jason are so fantastic and I had never heard of any of them before and yeah. yet they're just wonderful and so fun to watch. So, uh, 
And and we now find out that all the other people living there are employees. <laughs> right. <laughs> they work for hell, apparently. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I guess when you have just unlimited time and and resources, <laughs> yeah. you, you can do all this for the sake of four people. I guess so. Yeah, that seems people. like a bad uh, bad um, expenditure of resources. But I guess you know you get bored. I want to yeah. try to do things a different way. Right. And that is what <laughs> Michael did. Yes, he so. did. So, and, With uh, almost as much glee and delight as President Bartlett shows <laughs> in the next episode yeah. of The West Wing that we're discussing. Yeah. Swiss diplomacy, it's, you know, he's just won re-election. And this whole episode, he's just like, he's... He's pretty frisky. Euphoric. <laughs> Although, boy, is it the wrong time to be watching an episode with that line about being able to pat CJ oh, on the ass anytime pat you want C- I know. Like, wow. Ouch. <laughs> Maybe they need to go in and just remove that from the rerun. Yeah, <laughs> it just does not play well right now. And, certainly uh, does I was not. amused at how this, this, the, the writers of the episode tried to disavow any knowledge of it. Yeah, they... <laughs> As you know, West Wing is largely improvised. <laughs> Fully improvised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just got to um, give an outline. Yeah, uh-huh. that was unfortunate. I winced when I saw that. But uh, there was interesting comments on the West Wing Weekly podcast page that somebody thought we should be as offended by his crack that he was going to behead Debbie. Why are we so offended by patting someone on the ass and not by beheading them? And it's like, well, because really, <laughs> the because... one thing is much more likely to happen in a yeah. workplace than the other. Uh-huh. But sure. uh, and and isn't it amazing how you know they can have. They can have Lily Tomlin on for like, yeah, thirty seconds of screen time. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, there she is. There Hi. she is. Okay. Well, Bye. it's good because she should be there. You know, you shouldn't necessarily not have her there. But it's, I wonder what her deal was. <laughs> it's yeah. just like you have this many episodes in which you're actually featured, and then we're just going to take a day and and film you standing behind the desk saying single lines. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll just save them up. We'll save them up when and just drop them in them. when we need them, or just you yeah. know, just pass by for five minutes. We'll right. <laughs> but However uh, that works. yeah, she she has a good episode coming up when we get to. Um, oh, they mentioned it in this West Wing Weekly episode to the one where they're standing the egg. Oh, evidence of things unseen. I think it's called. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, she's in that one, and she's very good. That was that's an interesting episode. That's the next one I'm lo- really looking forward to. I'm uh-huh. just marking time till we get to that one. And this one, you had said last week, you didn't really remember I had too really much. No memory about of it all. It. And then when I saw him go into the office with the the Congress former Congresswoman and promise her things, I was kind of remembering where that went and thinking, oh, I don't want to watch Toby, this. Toby, right? Or mm-hmm. Toby. But you know what? They were absolutely right when they were talking on the podcast about how much sparkle those scenes between the two of them had. Yeah. And what a great character she was, who was just, you know, completely, this is the game I'm playing. I played, mm-hmm. I lost. It's what happens. You know? right. Nobody needs to feel that they owe me anything. That was right. very likable. She did a great job of that. Both. Yeah, she really did. <laughs> My husband, walking through the room while I was watching it, said, who is that? I recognize, I think he recognized her voice. And we looked her up on IMDb and could find nothing that he would have seen her in. So I don't <laughs> know. Maybe just something about it sounded familiar or whatever. But she was very, very good in this. Yes. Lucinda Jenny, I think is the name. The performance has redeemed that arc, which was otherwise just very sad. And I feel like we've had that before, you know, with... The time Sam talked his friend into running for something and then had to tell him he couldn't mm. anymore. And it seems like we've had a few things like that. So I was not looking forward to another one, but it was redeemed. Uh, but, you know, it was sort of, yeah. it was it was an okay episode. It wasn't bad. There were parts of it I liked. But mm-hmm. eh, it didn't stand out. Right. I mean, to me, it, it just was, it stood out with, um, with Bartlett just being... <laughs> I mean, he's always, he's usually, you know, yeah, in a, in a good mood, but this was yes. like B.O. He was particularly frisky, I think. Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know. But great scene with, with him and Abby yes. um, discussing the teenager who needed right. a heart lung transplant and, and, mm-hmm. you know, the conversation that 
he has in the Oval Office with the doctor who has to do it. Um, yeah. So that was... Who I can sympathize with. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess I see why that's a caveat of the medical profession is that you have to treat the patient in front of you, but it kind of stinks. Yeah. Yes. When it's a direct, I mean, most yeah. most doctors are not going to face, you know, the person no. who, the child of the person who actually, you know, yes. injured their family. But um, right. But still, yeah, that was that was a good yeah, storyline. Yeah, a, a good, a good uh, interestingly done. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was, I mean, it was fine. It was a fine episode. It was, it was a, a good, solid placeholder episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was a good episode of the podcast hearing from the yes. writers. Um, that was fun. They, Even though they kept calling Sam Josh, which confused me. Oh. I'm they kept, not oh, You know what? That's, I no, I just realized now what it is. They were referring to Josh Molina and I was thinking they were referring to Josh, the character oh, Josh. right. That's what it was. Because I kept saying, why are they, if that was Sam's plot, why are they, oh, that's what it was. Mm, Never mind. Mm-hmm. So I'm the one who's mistaken there. <laughs> but yes, it still confused me. Right. They need to be more specific. But lots of great inside, you know, this is how this happened. This is yes. how that happened. Kind yes. of fun stuff. That was very interesting. And, and from their, the writer's perspective and from a, a perspective of a person who worked in politics on how things work. Yeah. The thing about, the thing about all the different speeches for Gore just cracked oh, me up. Yeah. I was listening to it with my headphones on in the kitchen and I kept laughing. And my husband was like, I didn't say anything. It's, You're right. I couldn't explain to him. There was no way to explain to him what I was laughing at. Yeah, but that was, that was. I'm, I'm amazed that never got used as a plot for Toby and Sam having to write like five different versions of a speech, which then never got given. Yeah, that would have been a great one. <laughs> that sounds perfect for mm-hmm. them. Absolutely. So, That's... Swiss diplomacy. That was an episode that happened. Yes, it was. It was there. So why don't we move on to the challenge? Yes. Um, where you Moana. challenged me to watch Moana. I did. Something that you needed to have done a long time ago and you never did. If I have to force you, I will force you. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) But but I I saw it when it came out just out of, you know, solidarity with Lin-Manuel Miranda, who I was somewhat more obsessed with Hamilton and him then than I am now maybe, but I still am. So I was happy to watch it again and uh, really, really, really enjoyed it again and found that it had... Things I thought this at the time too. It had things about it that I don't see in many Disney movies, mm-hmm. princess movies that I really appreciated. First and foremost, a living mother. Yay. Is this like the only living mother in any Disney princess <laughs> right. movie ever? Could be. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's alive and she's not in a prison someplace and she's not. She's just a plain old mom who helps her daughter yes. out and when she needs it. Phew. And her dad was. You know, she has two living parents who care about her and any way that her father discouraged her from following her dream was not out of an evil plot or a spell or anything. It was just because he's a protective dad, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's safe here. I would like you to stay right. here. So I really, really liked that. I liked that there was no love interest. There was mm-hmm. no fake love interest. Like, you know, don't follow your dream. You have to marry the son of the so-and-so for political reasons. Right. There was no stuck-up guy in the island who was making life difficult for her. There, there, that, it's just completely a non-issue. Right. Nothing. Not even a little bit. Not even, I mean, in Maui, in no way could Maui be considered mm-hmm. love interest. So he was just, I, I, I really liked that. And I also, because I'm a wimp, I thought there was sort of less extreme menace than usual. I mean, certainly there were many dangerous situations, but they were dispatched fairly easily through determination and, you know, maybe plausible and not plausible. I mean, the the biggest villain outside of the lava monster, the lava monster turns out to be somebody else entirely, Mm -hmm. the person that they're trying to find. And even the crab, you know, is not is dispatched fairly quickly. Right. So because I am the person who will be closing her eyes and her ears <laughs> yes. when the really, really dangerous stuff is on, I appreciated that. I did not have to close my eyes or ears for any part of this movie. Right. And if and you watch I, the credits, the crab shows up at the very, very, yes, very, very, yes, very. Yes, still on his back right. and ticked. Yes. 
<laughs> if I was named Sebastian and had a cool Jamaican you would accent, you would. Me out. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That was very good, and uh, it was just such a straightforward plot. I thought there was no backstory. There was no, you know. Meanwhile, over here, mm-hmm. this other thing is happening. It was just you just followed her straight through to the end of her quest. Right. So. Those are things that I really, really appreciated about it, and it made it very pleasant for me to watch it again. Uh, I thought it was very empowering. You know, she was she was rescued a couple of times, and she rescued him a couple of yeah, times. Yeah. So it was all very much on her. Mm-hmm. You know, she had all the agency, I guess, as we say. Right. So that is my little pee on to it, which I think I've done on this podcast before. <laughs> what did you think about it? I thought all the things you thought. Um, I really enjoyed the fact that there was no romance. It was just, you know, yes. more of an adventure. Um, it. I did think it was very funny that Maui tried to call her a princess and she's like, I, yes. he's like, you have a <laughs> skirt and an animal sidekick. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so just like poking fun at some of those yes. Disney, you know, and not just Very Disney, much. certainly, but, you know, those yes. kind of kid movie tropes. So that was a lot right. of fun. And, of course, the music, <laughs> fantastic. Yes, um, yes. And I enjoyed just the little peeks at the, the Polynesian culture. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And, you know, from what I know about the movie, they, they certainly tried to be... Um, Yes. To be accurate with those and just like the tattoos, the way that Maui's basically his sidekick was like his his <laughs> tattoo of himself <laughs> on his body. Right. <laughs> like it was just a riot. So that was very fun. That was very cool. Um, I, I think my one of my favorite parts was just the very beginning when Moana is still a toddler and she goes to the oh, yeah. beach and she's picking up shells and um uh-huh. The ocean, you know, kind of rises up around her and it's like yes. she's walking in like a tunnel um, with right. the ocean swirling all around her and it's very cool. So It is very cool. Yeah. I really liked that. And I liked the the crazy grandmother who sort of helps her out at various times of need and stuff mm-hmm. and, is, and sees this happen and saves the thing for her. Right. I kind of like that. It's very, you know, if, if you're going to have a... a you know, I think family is used very well. Yes. <laughs> it's not, it's not grandma is locked up in the, in the, uh, turret of the mm-hmm. castle and she puts a spell on things. Yes. She's there helping and nurturing her. And, you know, even after death being a ghost stingray, I guess, <laughs> right. <from> leaving her, <laughs> whatever that is that she uh-huh. was, but that was very great. The, the animation, some of it was just gorgeous. I mean, the water, yes. The regular water animation was gorgeous. The the uh, water as a as a magical sentient being, right. not so much. You know, the big sort of wave, blue wave that interacted with her so much. I, I also really adored the hair animation. I thought her hair was like another character. It was like a second sidekick. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, you know, and there, did you I, notice that there is a whole team that was credited as the I hair am, team? <laughs> yes, I think I did the first time. And, and will there should mm-hmm. be, and applause to them, because her hair was fantastic. And I loved the way when she whipped her head around and it slapped her in the face. Yeah. <laughs> but some of the animation of the people, I felt they looked kind of plastic doll-like, you know, those kind of the cheap, mm-hmm. soft plastic dolls you get that are... Something about the the look of the faces. Uh, the rest of the bodies was fine, but something that the look of the faces seemed kind of plastic to mm-hmm. me. And I don't know if that's just the sort of animation it was or right. that got in the way for me sometimes mm-hmm. that it looked like a doll. Yeah. Um, but it's so hard times, to do people, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it is, I think. So. Other than that, it was, but even with that, yeah. it was gorgeous to look at. It was very, very nicely done and, uh, and to listen to and just everything about it was fun, I think. Mm-hmm. Yes, I really enjoyed so it and if, I'm really glad that I finally watched it. Yeah. Now I'm only one year behind on my animated <laughs> movies because I haven't seen Coco 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not going to see those. I never, I really never see, I I haven't seen most of them. I mean, the first time I saw Beauty and the Beast was the live action one we just saw, mm-hmm. which had all those things that I just said this one doesn't have. Yes, so, absolutely. <laughs> and perhaps for that reason, I had complications with it. <laughs> Things I do not enjoy, right. but uh, but this I liked very much, and I'm glad I watched it. And I'm glad I watched it again. Yeah. So if you like Catherine, somehow missed this one when it was out, and want something that is just very straightforward and enjoyable, check it out. Yeah. Good songs, definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. So what do you have in store for me for next? Week? So I am going to recommend. Now, I had to write this down because it's one of those ones that you could very easily get the title wrong. So, The Big Family Cooking Showdown. Okay. It's kind of a spinoff of The Great British Bake Off, which Alrighty. is known in the U.S. as The Great British Baking Show. Um, <laughs> so, that's when things get confusing. But um, mm-hmm. it's on Netflix. It is British. So, it's it's the okay. British. It's a British spinoff. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the hosts of it is this woman named Nadia who won the Bake Off. Um, oh. So, and I really enjoyed watching her when she was on it, the season that she mm-hmm. was on. And now she's kind of the, she's not a judge. She's like a host and a, a talking to the people person. So it, <laughs> okay. it's um, families that team up. Uh-huh. To do like a cooking competition. So there's three people from a family. It could be, you know, um, ones like that I saw was the grandmother, the mother and the son, or another one was a married couple and the woman's mother. So it's, it's a, a group from a family and they get together mm-hmm. and they have to do some challenges in like the tent or, uh-huh. or you know, the the home base of the show. And then some of them they actually do at home. So you get to see them at home. I feel like I've heard about this. Did they mention it on Extra Hot Great? They may have. I feel like they did it maybe on an Around the Dial or something. Maybe. Yeah. So, um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and it's like, it was mentioned for me on Netflix as something like a 97% match (laughs) of something I would like. So I think you will. Well, like it, it sounds too. like something that I would like to, and something very nice and relaxing to watch. Yes, absolutely. Yes, um, in keeping with our self care episode. From this right. <laughs> so we'll just do the first one. Sit and watch other people cook. Yeah, very relaxing. Especially since we're going to watch four um, episodes of yes. The Good Place, we'll just do one right. one hour episode of Excellent. The Big Family Cooking Showdown. Sounds fun. Available on Netflix. Yes. And what is the next West Wing that we are watching? I forget the name of the it next one. It is called ones. Arctic Radar. Okay. Yeah, I think I remember this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we'll watch that next time. And those four season two episodes of The Good Place. Um, yep. And the Big Family Cooking Showdown. Do we need to call out the names of the uh, the the uh, Good Place episodes, or just one through four of season well, two? Well, I will I will give them to you because, like we mentioned earlier, the first yes. two they have different names, but they were shown back to back when they originally aired, mm-hmm. um, and they're called okay. "Everything Is Great" and "Dance Dance Resolution." <laughs> um, and then following that are Team Cockroach and Existential Crisis. All right. So there you have it for <laughs> next time. And that'll be it for yes. round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Bye, Terry. Bye, Catherine. Bye, everyone.